Um, well, as an AC2, I read an incredible amount of books um, about the time period. As an AC2, I read an incredible amount of books about the city and about uh, the time period, and I had done a lot of research for AC2 as well, so that factored in and, and uh, helped support it. I read uh, a lot of books about the Borgia family, then uh, there was architectural research done, and I wrote the script, and then I had everything verified by a historian who's an expert at the period, making sure that my research was correct and that um, anything that I put in that was uh, incorrect was there for an important reason and there's very little that that has been embellished that way that is documented. Most of the fun of Assassin's Creed comes in filling in the cracks in history so the everything that's documented ends up being the ends up being the um, you know the stuff that we know about but then the the hidden stuff between is where the story of Assassin's Creed goes. Well, uh, Rome is very much the story of Ezio becoming a leader, and I was inspired by Machiavelli's book, The Prince. And so uh, Machiavelli factors in as a character, and at the beginning of the game, he's saying a lot of things that are the opposite of what he said in The Prince. And it's actually Ezio, through his behavior and through his actions, that teach Machiavelli about the correct behavior of a leader. And so Ezio uh, goes from, from uh, being uh, just an assassin within the Brotherhood, a very charismatic and uh, uh, skilled assassin, but uh, an assassin nonetheless, to the, the leader th by uh, uh, a very long process of proving to people like Machiavelli and to uh, the various other assassins that he's capable of being a leader. And, and over the course of the game, players are really going to get a sense of uh, what it takes to be a leader, the incredible uh, amount of work and, uh, and time that it takes really. Because I think a lot of people today feel that um, if you're charismatic you can become a leader almost overnight and that's not the case at all. That to build up the trust and the relationships required to lead uh, a group of people and take responsibility for a group of people um, requires a lot of work. And at the same time, you know, Ezio will cross paths with people like Katarina Sforza and um, Bartolomeo de Alviano, people that you remember from the last game, which gave me a real opportunity to explore a lot of the drama of the setting. So unlike AC2 where you met a lot of characters for the first time in Brotherhood, you're going to encounter a lot of resistance where you didn't expect resistance and a lot of surprises from people that you thought you knew. Well, um, this is the largest city we've ever made in an Assassin's Creed game. Before and uh, we're very proud of it. Um, it took a lot of skill to make and you can really travel across it and feel uh, yourself getting lost in it almost. And um, you can climb everywhere. There are hidden things on certain landmarks. There are missions that uh, trigger when you go inside buildings like the Pyramid of Cestus and uh, other other locations and you know there's hidden stuff on the Pantheon behind me. Um, and and at the same time all the missions occur throughout the city and you, you encounter uh, people using the spaces in different ways, like the Colosseum has the passion play inside of it, and um, you know you visit Tiber Island for the Assassin's Hideout, and uh, you, you you basically travel the entire width and length of the city doing all the different things in the game. So uh, it really is for the player to explore. Rome is is given in its its fullest, and um, go find it. Go find everything.